Hello, everyone, and welcome to our panel discussion about recruiting and hiring at the University of Minnesota. My name is Marissa Smith, and I'm the Director of Student and Recent Alumni Engagement here at the Alumni Association. And I'm joined by some very talented colleagues and exceptional students um, who are going to introduce themselves in just a minute. Um, but before we get started, I just wanted to share a couple of housekeeping items. Um, this is a panel discussion, and we are really here to answer your questions. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask us at any point, you can use the questions pane in the GoToWebinar panel. We'll be monitoring those throughout the discussion. So feel free to send us your ideas and questions. Um, and then also just want to do a quick shout out to the Alumni Association. This panel discussion is a part of an ongoing webinar series. Um, that we offer uh, where we talk with experts about career, life, and learning topics. Um, and if you're a member and helping support our programming, thank you. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a member, you can do so online at umnalumni.org. I want to do just a quick tech check with John. How's it sound? Is it working? I don't think anybody's coming in. Hi. <laughs> and we have another student who's going to be joining us up here in just a second. She had class, which is wonderful. That's why we're all here, right? To learn and get an education. Um, but she's going to be coming up and joining us. Hi. <laughs> um, and so without any further delay, I'm going to have the panelists introduce themselves. If you want to share your name, role on campus, your student, your year in school, what you're studying, anything else you'd like uh, the listeners to know about you. We'll start with Inam. Hello, everybody. My name is Ina Mahmoud. Um, I am a junior right now, and my major is Sociology of Law, Crime, and Deviance. And I work at the CLA Career Services as a peer advisor. And I guess it's really rewarding for me to help students and advise them when it comes to, you know, figuring out how to structure their resume and cover letters and giving them as much help as possible and helping them with my best ability. Hi everyone, I'm Emily Loudon and I work in the College of Liberal Arts Career Services Office and I'm on the Employer Relations team. So I work with the team of people to engage employers on campus um, with the purposes of recruiting liberal arts students for internships or full-time opportunities and also engaging uh, employer partners and alumni partners in some of our career development activities. Hi everyone, my name is Kathleen Fink. I am the Associate Director of Employer Engagement at the Carlson School. So similar to Emily's role, I work on the employer facing team in the Career Center, working specifically with our undergrad students. Um, I serve healthcare as my main industry, but I lead our team with our strategic priorities and initiatives, um, work with our um, coordinating our employment data. We do career treks all over the nation and locally. Um, so yeah, that's all about me. I am Ife Ikansari, so hi everyone. Um, I am a junior at the Carlson School studying marketing and minoring in HR. Um, I'm a peer career coach and I really work with people on cover letters, we work on resumes, and we also do a lot on practice interviews and understanding people's passions and what they want to do with the career going forward. Great. Well, thank you all for sharing a little bit about yourself. And now we're going to dive into the discussion. And so to start, Emily, I was hoping you would share a little bit about the structure and context for career services here at the U of M. Sure. Um, so it's a big place in our career services model is decentralized. So there isn't a central career services office for all students or all employers. It's really up to each collegiate unit um, to structure their career services, and that includes the coordinate campuses as well. Um, we do have a career services administration office, which does have some staff and centralized uh, resources. So things like Goal Pass, Powered by Handshake is a centralized resource. Um, but then when you get to this, uh, more of the programming, it's often um, offered through the collegiate unit career services. So we do many things the same or offer uh, many similar programming in all career services offices, but we do specialize in serving the students in our collegiate units. So one of the main things that we're here to talk about is how alumni can be supportive in the recruiting and hiring process at their organizations. And so Kathleen, maybe you can talk a little bit about how alumni do help with the recruiting process and how have alumni supported the work in college? Yeah. 
So alums are probably one of the most important pieces of the recruiting process. Um, without the alums, I think, you know, students, I think it's harder for students to see themselves at the company in the role, kind of see what that path to success looks like after college. So um, I always tell our alums, I can't do my work, our, our office can't do our work without their support. So know that everyone here plays an important role and we need your help. Um, from kind of a, I, you know, I brought a couple of examples that I think are really helpful. So one example I wanted to share was we have um, an alum who is at a consulting firm in Chicago, and he had reached out to me saying, "Listen, I want to get more Carlson students at my company. You're, you know, Carlson's not a core school, but I think we can get there." And this was this happened about four years ago, and I worked with him. He was able to get some backing from his company to come collect resumes, do on-campus interviews, um, and he really drove that relationship. He works with the recruiters, and they just said, "Kind of make it happen." And four years later, now where we sit, we are school for that company and they have hired I want to say in the last four years probably like 10 to 15 of our students so that's a real that was such a great win for our office for our students so that's a I think a really great example of how alums can just be an advocate internally especially if the company does not currently recruit at the U whether it's at Carlson CLA any of the colleges um, I also think alums can help out um, with recruiting when it comes to volunteering, whether that's connecting internally with your recruiting team to say, when are you coming on campus? How can I show up and be there to support? Or it's working with alumni associations. So within Carlson, we have our own alumni um, kind of kind of branch from the alumni association. And there's this group called the Gold Board. It stands for Gophers of the Last Decade. And I recently met with one of the, one of the leadership members of the Gold Board to talk about other ways that they can get involved whether volunteering um, from the recruiting lens so i think it's kind of plugging into both sides of the house your own company and then getting in touch with us because there at the end of the day there are a ton of opportunities we need everyone's help and resources um, i can speak for, for for our career center we're all higher ed professionals so where our alums really bring in values that you you all are the functional experts you're in the roles you're in the, the marketing role the supply chain role um you know whatever that looks like so yeah um yeah no i think that's really good just to reiterate there's kind of two pieces where i see alums really helping with recruiting it's actively recruiting like um, as kathleen was stating um highlighting when you've uh, had interns or volunteers or employees from the U of M, um, making sure that that's um, obvious to your talent acquisition teams. Um, and then also being the resource for students as they really prepare to enter the job market um, and being that could be on campus, that can just be being available for informational interviews. Um, but that's a huge, huge need for students is being able to see themselves in an organization. So especially for liberal arts students, one of the things we try to do is we partner with our alumni society to bring liberal arts students to organizations where liberal arts alumni are employed um, for site visits. And that can be a really neat opportunity. You can see a lot of aha moments happen for CLA students when they're on site of like, oh gosh, with my psychology background, I could work at a place like this. Um, and so alumni have a great um, opportunity to help bridge some access points for students in their own organizations through creating programming or you know just being those visible advocates um, then also coming to campus and being resources here to help with informational interviews practice interviews all those pieces to really help students get ready for the jobs and internships I guess one more thing I would like to add is you guys have the opportunity to encourage students as much as possible because students tend to get intimidated by the fact of like, you know, applying to a job or an internship. And I think it's important to kind of normalize, you know, the student experience since you guys have attended the University of Minnesota. And I guess we already have that personal connection with you. So I guess trying to bring that into uh, perspective when speaking with the student can really break that barrier and can possibly give them a chance to, um, you know, apply to an internships or uh, get a possible job. I think in addition to that is like while you're here recruiting, like having alumni from Carlson is really important because when you get that job and you get to the first day, you have someone to talk to, you have someone that's already been through it. So I think it's not just about like getting the job, but it's being there when I, I come on day one, so. I'm really gonna jump in. I know one thing that we're seeing, 
companies start doing as well as once once students um, get an offer is tapping into the alums to set up a coffee chat meeting to say okay ask me the questions that maybe you don't want to ask the you don't feel comfortable asking the recruiters or your hiring manager so i think if that's a strategy that's not being used currently in your company i think bringing that up as an option is another really nice way to connect um, current students to alums in the recruiting sense to help make that that connection um, happen. Um, and one other thing to um, that some organizations, the larger organizations, they might have corporate alumni groups. So a U of M um, corporate alumni group and we career centers can often work with those groups to help those groups engage. Um, so we work with a couple of them. They'll come and provide resume reviews for students um, or be on campus really from you know, it's not, they're not there recruiting, they're really there representing their um, alumni group at their organization as a way to give back. So if you've got opportunities in your own organizations, even if it's not a big, you know, a big place, but if you can um, organize any, a group of U of M alumni um, that might have interest in connecting with, with camp, the campus community, that can be a great strategy too. Already such great information shared. And what I love about what you all shared is that this support um, a student's career aspirations go so much further than posting a job. We know how much important that is, um, and that's one of the main reasons we're here talking, but there's a lot of ways that alumni can support students' career aspirations, and you mentioned many of them. I think we should take some time to dive a little deeper into the structure and opportunities that exist here at U, um, and let's start with mentorship. Um, so students, I don't know if you've had any experience with either formal or informal mentorship, um, and our career professionals, if you want to talk a little bit about what structures exist here on campus for alumni to get involved in mentorship. I can, I can start. So um, at Carlson, um, we have a mentor program that's run through this, this um, platform called People Grove. Um, so it's the same as the, you can correct me if I'm wrong, the, the, the university mentor program, but it's just a separate arm that Carlson yeah. has. So you're referring to the Maroon and Gold Network, well, yes, which we'll definitely yes. talk more about okay. in fact. Yeah, so for, for Carlson, um, our, our mentor program, Running Through People Grove, is probably the best way to get involved. What's really great about the program um, that we have now is you can have either long-term or short-term matches, where before this program was only long-term matches. So the benefit to that is there is a formal sign-up process if you want to have a long-term match to be partnered with a student throughout the year. Um, there are certain dates for that. It usually happens early September, but the short-term match is also great because a student can just log in and say, you know, I'm looking for an alum who maybe works in X industry or lives in X city, and you want to just ask them a couple of questions. So it has, I don't have any of the numbers on it, but I know the, the engagement we have between students and alums has probably doubled or even tripled since changing to this platform. And on the alumni side, what's super nice is that it connects right to your LinkedIn profile. So from a user, Ability. It just is really easy to get all that connected. Um, so yeah, our mentor program is just a fantastic way to engage with students, give back, and then there's sometimes a nice little side benefit, and that can be a great way to hire an intern or hire a student full time because you get to know them, or maybe they have a roommate who's looking for a, an opportunity within a company. So there's also these other benefits that that come with it. But most importantly, giving back, helping the students out. Um, so. Carlson is an example of a, of a unit that does have a one-to-one -one mentor program, and there are other um, colleges within the U of M system that do have mentor programs, one-to-one -one match programs. CLA does not currently have a one-to-one -one mentor program, so we um, really approach mentoring from leveraging other resources. So one of the resources we're really excited about and are uh, promoting heavily with students and alumni is the Maroon and Gold Network. So. We can talk more about it, but for those of you that are um, maybe not familiar, it is a, a platform provided by People Grove, and it's available for all U of M alumni and friends of the university, and then current students. and it And it provides a database that uh, people can search on a variety of topics um, or a variety of search criteria, um, and you can reach out through the system or or connect outside of the system. Um, so it's a really great resource and we're encouraging liberal arts students to utilize that to find um, alumni and professionals to connect for informational interviews, job shadows, or if they are really intentional about wanting to set up more of a long-term mentor uh, relationship, that that's one of the resources available to them. We also partner with the CLA Alumni Society and um, our alumni relations director to create some programming 
that provides space for students and alumni to connect. So um, Kathleen kind of mentioned they've got the short term and long term space. And what we find with students is um, there are mixed definitions around mentoring. Some think it's like this long term, you've got to meet every month and have a really organized, structured experience. Some might find a mentor that's just someone in their network that they can connect with when they have a question. Um, some might view mentoring as, um, you know, more of a very short term experience. So trying to provide a lot of resources for students and help um, dispel some myths that mentoring doesn't only happen in that one-to-one, -one, long-term, very structured space. Um, so we, again, partner with Alumni Society and uh, Alumni Relations to do in-person networking events for CLA students and alumni, often around kind of a career field theme. Um, and then again, our site visits are really opportunities to expose um, and help build connections between current students and alumni. And anyone interested in learning more about um, schools that have one-to-one -one match programs could certainly look uh, at their alumni relations offices for those units. Students, have you any experience with mentorship, either formal or informal, that you want to talk about? I love the Carlson Mentor Network. It's kind of like Tinder, but for mentoring, because <laughs> um, it's really nice. We have the short term, and as I'm looking, like going full time next year, I want to like know different industries. I'm usually in your courses, you're kind of like pigeonholed and hold into one thing. So like in marketing, it's usually consumer package, good companies that you're looking at. And so by like having the Carlson Network, I can be like, hmm, what's aerospace, what's healthcare? And I can really have a like, quick conversation that can really create a long-term relationship going forward. So I really like that. Um, and another way I found a lot of my mentors has been through clubs. So alumni coming to different club meetings and just speaking is huge. Um, Cause that's a really great space to be really raw with students about like your experiences. And then if I feel like I connect to that person, I'm like, this could be a really great long-term relationship. So that's another place. Um, so when I use the Maroon and Gold Network uh, resource, I actually find the informational interviews really helpful because I guess in CLA Career Services, when I help students as a peer advisor, uh, most of their questions regard, you know, how an interview goes, basically. And everyone gets intimidated by that just because, I mean, the number one question they always ask me is like, oh, my God, I don't know how to answer what are my strengths and weaknesses? But I guess it's not just that question. One thing that I encourage students to do is, you know, trying to really uh, inform themselves about the specific internship or job that they're applying to, because I think it's important when you're being interviewed that the, you know, whoever's getting interviewed, I think you should ask questions to the employer because it shows that you are motivated to be a part of their organization or um, internship. And it shows the employer that, you know, they seem to be curious. They want to get to know more about my, you know, specific organization or internship. And I think that can really make a difference. One last thing, um, as like, from the career coach side, a lot of people use the Girls and Network and these other networks um, to get outside of the campus and get outside of the Twin Cities in general. So people who are looking for jobs in Chicago or San Francisco. So I know at least like people come to me and they're like, how do I see someone in this space or this industry or this city? Um, and that's usually what I tell them about the Girls and Network. And I would add too, sometimes we hear from people when they're in the, in, um, you know, in a professional networking database, like, oh, I'm out there, but I don't hear from students or, um, you know, I'm open to being contacted. And the thing I also like to mention is that your information just being available for students is, is helpful in and of itself. So even if you're not actively hearing from students, you know, on a monthly basis, they're still using the database. They're still seeing your information. They still um, can feel comfort, comfort knowing that you're there for them to reach out to if and when they are ready. Um, so I'd like people to know that even when your information's in the database, it's still valuable and useful to students. That's great to hear. And these communities are growing and they're growing fast. I can speak for the Maroon and Gold Network. We have now just under 1,500 alumni already uh, joined and over 1,000 students. So it's really exciting to see the energy growing there. Um, so let's talk just a little bit about other, any, are there any other alumni volunteer opportunities that you want to highlight that are available? start. So um, at Carlson, we have a variety of programs that we host through the Career Center. Um, so we are always looking for volunteers for mock interviews. We do a resume review program. Um, 
And then outside of that, we also do programming for students. We do a program called Major Fest. So it's helping students understand there's this major and what does that look like for a role, for a, for a functional opportunity. Um, so that's one example of where we we love having alums come back to be able to talk about these are classes I took or I started at this major and now I'm working in this function which is totally different than the major I started with. So we again it's coming back to that where we're all higher ed professionals and student affairs professionals leaning on the alums for that functional expertise really helps our students understand what can they do with their degree. Um, so yeah, so the volunteering piece um, and then we also all of our recruiting events. We love having alums. We have special alumni stickers that we give out. So there's the career fair, a company information session. We have a, a tabling program called Snack Stops, where companies can have a table set up just outside of the cafeteria and talk to students. So those are other great ways to get involved. Um, just, and then also faculty, um, partner with any faculty for classroom opportunities. The career center, we don't coordinate that, but I know a lot of alums still have relationships with faculty members. So I think connecting with faculty that you may know to say, how can I get involved in the classroom? Where can I make an impact? Um, is okay. um, in CLA, really similar to what Kathleen just described. So um, we each semester offer a variety of career development programming. And something new in CLA is um, we have career, we've always had career courses, but they're um, expanding in number and, and increasing in, in, in student enrollment. and what we're infusing into those career courses is a lot more of, of actually required employer engagement, required employer and alumni engagement, which is great for the students and, um, and wonderful for us and also means that we need a lot more volunteers for a lot of our programming because of, of things are just expanding. Um, and so through those courses, many, one of them, all of our students are required to complete a practice interview. We're also bringing um, panel alumni and employer panels uh, to all of those students and resume reviews. Um, they're required to do a more in-depth employer engagement activity, which could be a site visit or a job shadow or something. So we have a need, uh, a great need for, a great need and opportunity for uh, volunteers um, but again, it's practice interviews, resume reviews, speaking on a panel, um, and um, we are also other kind of uh, other new things coming up where we could be incorporating alumni in our career center. Um, and in the follow up to this, you'll get some contact information. Um, so if you're interested in engaging with CLA students, I'd be happy to follow up with more information on all the specific opportunities, but there is no shortage. <laughs> That's great to hear. Um, maybe we could take a step back into the big picture just a little bit and talk a little bit about some of the trends and timeline for recruiting. So for folks that might be newer to this world, what are some things that they should know um, are happening? Yeah. So. Um, Obviously, working across, and I can speak for what we're seeing at the business school. Might not be true for all the different majors and colleges across campus, but what we're seeing is that there, that everything is just happening earlier and earlier. We kind of joke that at this point, students are going to getting recruited in kindergarten, and unfortunately, that's sometimes where we're at. So. Um, when I started in career services nine years ago, the, the traditional model was junior fall of junior year was when all the internship. Um, I'm sorry, all the Rewind. Fall of senior year was full-time um, recruiting, and then spring of junior year was when the internship recruiting happened. And now what we're seeing is fall of junior year is when all the internship recruiting is happening. And then a lot of those students are then getting their full-time offer after the internship. So then there's very little full-time recruiting happening senior year because they have accepted roles. Now, these are this, this model is certainly for the bigger companies, which we have many of them in the Twin Cities, um, who are able to project out. There's certainly still just-in-time hiring. Students are getting more, you know, opportunities a couple months before they graduate or even after they graduate. But the biggest trend that we're just seeing on the business side of things is that companies need more and more talent, and it's happening earlier and earlier, where sophomores are getting, um, sophomores are getting internships for junior year, summer, and this certainly is also specific for specific industries. So we're, we're seeing this with um, public accounting and with consulting and investment banking. Um, but other companies are also jumping on this because there's that 
just kind of crunch for talent that's happening. So, and in, in the career center, it, you know, it's, it's this push and pull where there is this market demand and we want to be able to do that, but then it's also how are we preparing students, how are we letting them know that this timeline is so, is happening so much earlier. Um, so I definitely feel, I don't know if you feel this way, Emily, but I definitely am feeling, again, in my nine years in career services, we're kind of at this change of how it's looking and feeling. Um, another trend that we're seeing is more virtual interviews, where um, traditionally it was for the, for the bigger companies, again, doing the first round interview on campus, then a second round at their office. We're now more and more doing virtual interviews for the first round, um, which can be good and bad. There's pros and cons to that. Um, so yeah I, I feel, yeah, I feel like recruiting is going through this change, and we're not quite sure, I feel like, where it's going to land. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything more to add. It's very similar, just a heavier push and, and earlier in the fall, and then certainly organizations expressing interest in connecting with um, younger students, so first year and sophomore students, and, and trying to think of creative ways to keep them in their pipeline. Um, and then, again, virtual activity, whether that's video interviews or phone interviews, um, but also, on the other hand, still hearing from students um, that they, they do want in-person interaction so it is kind of an interesting space of you know virtual is great for a lot of reasons resources time that sort of thing uh, but there still is definitely a desire for in-person connection from students and to emily's um, point about students looking for more you know, in ways that's our snack stop program we developed that was directly from what we we're hearing from students is that they didn't have time to go to the, the hour-long info session that has been for services standard and they wanted a more quick touch point so i think we're also innovating of how can we create different opportunities for companies if they want to engage earlier how can we meet them where that is and if they want more informal how can we change so there i think we're also trying to think about how to engage differently as we are in this changing landscape of recruiting interesting all right Ife and Inam, it's time to pull you into the conversation a little bit more you've been very patient um, but I would love to talk a little bit about the experiences that you've had um, as, as students and as um, interns and employees. Um, what are some of the, you know, successes and what have been some of the struggles or challenges that you've faced um, or that you've heard others talk about? Yeah, so um, speaking towards like recruiting early and earlier. So last year I interned at General Mills, but I was the only one that was 20. And so my biggest struggle was like the social aspect because a lot of them wanted to like go out and like go to bars. And I was like, I'm 12, um, so I can't do that. So that was really difficult coming into that space. And like we really had a great social relationship internally, but then externally, I kind of relied on my other friends who are working as sophomores at other companies um, for that social aspect that summer. Um, so what I've seen in terms of like me and also just people going through this space, a lot of people are starting to wonder like, who am I outside of college? Because <laughs> I don't think any of us have like asked that question, like what are my hobbies? What are my interests? What do I do when I'm done at five o'clock? Um, so I think that's some of the places where when we talk to alumni, that could really help us figure out like what was that transition from college to like being an adult adult? Um, so I think that's like been the biggest struggle for me and what I've seen from students coming in, um, starting their first internship or their first full-time position. Yeah, I agree. Um, I actually intern mostly at nonprofits, and most of these nonprofits are unpaid internships. And I think when students hear unpaid internships, they kind of go from the other direction just because you don't get the money. But I mean, something that I encourage students is that, yeah, you don't get the money, but the experiences that you're going to gain from this internship can help you in the long run that can possibly get you a opportunity that you didn't think was possible in the future and i guess something that i related to um was you know when i did i also worked in a paid internship and i guess i just didn't have that personal connection with the staff just because after my work was done it was like okay bye and we didn't really have any personal interaction after that and as for me this is just specifically what i enjoy and what I like. Um, I like to gain a personal relationship with the people that I'm working with because it just builds this strong bond between each other and I'm able to, you know, freely discuss my views, my opinions, and I'm comfortable in the workplace or environment. And I think that's something that a lot of students kind of, 
uh, don't really see when they think of just like paid internships, they just think of the money. But I personally really believe that if you are able to, you know, talk to a, your supervisor in a very, I don't want to say informal way, but I want it to be like in like an inviting, welcoming way. It just because then a student will feel um, less intimidated by that. Just because when we think of supervisor, we think of, oh, our big boss, we have to act like a certain way, which I agree with. But at the same time, I think you should show a little bit of your whole self, your identity, because that is an authentic interaction that should be taken for granted. Let's expand on that a little bit um, and think about maybe a little bit more future focused. How do you perceive employers and what do you look for when you are evaluating whether or not to work for an organization? So my identity is I am identifies myself as a South Asian Muslim and Muslim woman. And I guess my identity is something that I can't hide away. It is what it is. And a lot of it can be sometimes hard talking to employers because I guess I get this. I want to feel, again, as welcomed as possible. So I'm going to give my whole self my identity, who I am as a person. And I want to feel welcome that way. And, I, and I, that's what I look for in employers. I want to see... Um, you know, if they are willing to accept me for who I am and if they are willing to, you know, I guess adapt to my differences and hopefully kind of, you know, their differences and my differences, we kind of want to meet at one end, if that makes sense. Kind of breaking that barrier of like, no, you're like this and I'm like this. We can't be the same. So I don't know if that I guess that's just something that I perceive employers as. And I, I guess just want to, and I, I feel like also with my identity, I'm able to bring in some diverse, uh, you know, I guess views that can possibly help the organization in a way, I guess, bring it, bring it to their attention and that can possibly lead them to bettering their organization. So um, I know this is probably happens all over campus, but I can only speak towards Carlson. We spend a lot of time understanding like ourselves and who we are and like what culture is and what a culture looks like in a company and then how we could fit into that culture. Um, looking like what are our strengths, our weaknesses, how what environments help us bring our best self. Um, so for me, I can echo a lot of that. I really feel like for me, it's a company that like is a full embodiment of me. So when you say the company, people are like, oh, that makes sense. That makes sense why Ife is working there because the culture is just a complete match. Um, and another thing for me too is like, even if it doesn't seem like that's a company I would actually work at, it's a company that will support me in who I am. So I might be like, people will be like, Ife, marketing, like, why are you working for a bank or a finance company? But that's okay because that finance company is really good about being conscious about like who I am, my identity, and also being like, okay, she's a learner and she really likes being innovative. And we're going to give her the space to do that and be that. So as long as you give me the space to be me and support me and who I am, um, I'm most likely going to want to work for you. And Evie, out of curiosity, how, as a student, how do you find out what a company's culture is like? Like, what does that process look like? Yeah. Um, I think it's a few things. Um, I think it's going to start dipping into the other questions we have. But I think for me, it's really about, like, people who show up who are constantly at the Carlson School, like putting a face out, and that way I'm able to know who you are. So a good example is US Bank. They are everywhere on campus, um, and they're really good about like bringing the same consistent people and talking towards who they are. And I think it's through the recruiters and the people I talk to at different events that I can really see like, okay, like is this conversation flowing? Am I like really feeling like I could see myself there? Um, and sometimes there's also just site visits through the Career Center or also through different clubs, like going there and be like, do I feel like I fit in here? Um, and I think it's also too about major. So going back to how like it, you want to be in a company that sees your major as really important. So like I want to be in a space where they'd be like, yep, marketing is really vital and we want to put that forefront instead of being like, oh, marketing, like that's our last thought process. We put no money towards it. So um, I think it's just a combination of all those. Okay. And then just one thing that I'd like to add is something, again, that I look for in employers is a uh, diverse work, like a oh, diverse work for workforce across all aspects. So it's not just, you know, your race, ethnicity. I think it's also age. Um, I love working with 
you know, different groups of ages, whether that be old or young, just because I'm able to kind of, you know, get an insight of how, you know, young people think and then how older people think. And that can possibly lead me to develop my own thinking and that can help me possibly, you know, network in the future with these type of personalities. So that's important too. Um, and one thing I'll add, which I heard both of our students uh, kind of refer to is, is this authenticity. So I think what we hear from students a lot is they're looking, um, they're looking for authentic organizations and then also organizations that um, really, you know, support authenticity. I also hear a lot from recruiters that they're wanting authentic interactions with, um, with students. And so it's really hard to like nail down a definition of authentic and how do you be your authentic self while also being professional and while also feeling like I'm not really ready yet for this professional world. And so that's a space um, where I think alumni have a lot of opportunity to really help students um, understand how to navigate their own identities in and while being authentic while also still um, approaching the professional world. Um, in a, in a confident way, but also an authentic way. And so, yes. Well, and to that end, I wonder um, for Inam and Ife, how have alumni helped you learn about what is professionalism like in the workplace and how to show up at work in a setting, um, in one of the settings that you've been in? Um, I could just talk about professionalism, like kind of how I view it and how like I've been taught to view it. Um, I always tell people when I'm coaching them, which I probably shouldn't do this, but it's <laughs> it's kind of like a relationship. You never want to be with someone who doesn't want you. And so it goes back to like knowing yourself and knowing when you will be your full self in a situation. And so professionalism to me is just like fitting into the cultural norms. And so if it's part of who you are, like those norms that you see, um, you're able to do that in a more authentic way. And so that's how I kind of see professionalism because if you're not comfortable wearing a suit and tie, then there's certain companies you probably don't want to work for versus like, I love wearing jeans and I like a casual environment um, and doing happy hour every night. There's companies out there who do that too. So I think professionalism is really defined by the norms of the company um, and how you fit into those norms. Um, and then I'm trying to see things, if there's any examples. I think it's just back to being visible. So every time that I'm able to have a conversation with an alumni or a company and be able to see like what they do, then I will be able to be like, yep, that's a jean company <laughs> or that's a suit and tie company. So I think that's it for me. Yeah, I completely agree with her. And also just one other thing is being like having fun, being passionate about your work, I think is really important. And I think that alumni really, I would want to see you guys encourage that because students already are so i guess stressed and anxious with school already they kind of just want work to be an outlet and i think obviously that might not be an outlet but i think it's important for alum to kind of encourage that be like it's okay you know bringing your own ideas to the table can really make a difference in the workplace and just being excited to show up being motivated can really make a difference because if you're coming in with a negative attitude you're just going, it's it's not going to be helping you in any way, but kind of changing that and steering your, I guess, your focus into a more positive attitude can definitely encourage you to, I guess, become I guess, more passionate about your work that you do. And I'd also add too, I think alums can provide a really great perspective in being honest about the ups and downs. I think like I had said before, I think, or this, I said this in a meeting earlier, not here, but I was talking about how um, you know, students sometimes think of success as a linear path and they don't see that there could be months, even years, where maybe you're in a job that's not great, but it's gonna help you get to that next spot. And I think our students need to hear that message. And I can especially attest to this at Carlson where I think um, our students can be incredibly competitive and very driven, but I think hearing that message of, it's okay if your first job after college is maybe not this knock out of the park job, but it's a job where you're gonna be learning skills. I think the, the point is it's, it's that growth mindset of you're gonna learn something and it'll help you get to where you want to be. So really being honest about the tough times and how it helped you learn and made you appreciate the good times in your career. Yeah, that's a great point that I'd like to echo too. Sometimes we'll have alums come back and they'll be on a panel and, and sometimes apologize of like, oh, you know, I. I don't know if I'm the right person to speak on this panel because I didn't have my, I, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to major in and I didn't have this perfect career path. I'm like, no, that makes you the perfect person yeah. to be on the panel because that's exactly what's helpful for students to hear is that, you know, you graduate, you're out in the world, everyone's, you know, successful by their own definition. Everyone has a different 
definition of success, but you don't, you were not successful necessarily because you had it 100% completely figured out before you graduated. Um, and that's a really powerful message for students to hear and help them feel relaxed and also more confident um, in themselves. We've had a question come in from a listener. And so just want to do another plug um, for anybody listening. We've actually reached the end of our prepared questions. So if you have anything that you were hoping to learn about, uh, please do go ahead and ask that in the questions pane. But in the meantime, um, can you talk a little bit about how alumni, how open are career centers to alumni suggesting ideas for an event or programming? Um, essentially wondering about the flexibility, you know, if an alumni has an idea of a way that they want to get involved, can they reach out to you? And how do you, how has that looked in the past? You work with them to create something from scratch. Um, I can speak for at least um, in CLA. And so I represent the employer relations team. We also have career, career counselors. And then I um, liaison and work closely with our director of alumni relations. And we love to hear ideas. Um, so some of many of some of the programming we offer regularly um, has come to us through ideas from alumni. So whether it's you know from a recruiting standpoint, like your organization, you have an idea of some a way to utilize your alumni, we'd love to hear it. Or if you have an idea for an alumni and student type networking event or opportunity, we'd certainly be open to having that conversation. Yeah, Bert Carlson, 100%. We would love to hear ideas um, and suggestions about what we can do better, differently, change things up. Um, as Emily had mentioned, we'll have a follow-up email afterwards, and we'll all send contact information for how to get in touch with us, because we definitely welcome um, lots of ideas, because it, it takes a village, and you all are part of our village. So um, we, yeah, just the, the, more, the more help, the better. Our village has half a million people in it. <laughs> it's a big Good village. village. Uh, so you alluded to a follow-up email. Let's talk just a little bit about next steps. Are there any specific resources, websites, job post boards, events coming up that you want to make sure to highlight uh, before we close out? Sure. So a couple like really logistical things would be the job posting systems here on campus. So Goal Pass, powered by Handshake, is a university-wide system with the exception of Carlson. Um, all Twin Cities campus, with the exception of Carlson, and coordinate campuses, um, students have access to the system. And it's a great place to be for organizations. You can post opportunities, full-time, internship, volunteer, part-time, seasonal. And then also that's where you can search for events happening on campus, whether that's career fairs or other um, events where we're looking for professionals um, to register. And then the other thing I'll say about Goal Pass is that all alumni have access to Goal Pass as job seekers, including Carlson alumni um, as job seekers. Yeah, so then at Carlson, we have The Edge, which is our, our site for job postings, whether full-time internships and events. So um, the follow-up, I can send a link to that. Um, similar to, to Gold Pass, it's totally free to post. Um, you know, it's it, it's open. We do vet we, we do we, we do vet jobs just to make sure they you know they're not scams. But I don't assume anyone here would be putting a scam posting out. Um, so yeah, we, we we've got The Edge, and then I'll also share in the follow-up. I can share information about our upcoming career fairs, the mentor program. Obviously. You'll be a really important um, next step and then contact information for connecting with the employer engagement team and then we can also be um, help help connect alums to our student services team there are career coaches um, who plan most of our student facing events outside of the recruiting space and another event to keep um, a lookout for is the U of M job and internship fair so it's February 22nd 2019 it's um, the whole university, so students from the tw all Twin Cities units and then the coordinate campuses, um, and it typically attracts 300 plus organizations that's at the convention center, and it is open um, to alumni to attend who are within three years of graduation. So alumni can attend as a job seeker if they're within three years of um, graduation. And then similar in the follow-up, um, there'll be a link to Goal Pass, link to more information about the U of M job and internship fair, contact information for me. I, if you are interested in, in engaging with liberal arts students this spring or at any point in the future, 
um, please reach out. I'm happy to have a conversation and talk through the ways that would make the most sense for you. And then the other thing that'll come out um, in, the, in the resources, follow-up resources, will be a link to career.umn.edu. So it's a central career services page. So if you're interested in connecting with a unit that isn't represented here today, there's contact information. And then also other career fairs that happen on campus outside of uh, what the Carlson and then the U of M job fair there are other fairs too. Um, so that's all available at career.umn.edu. Anything else that anyone wants to add before we close out? I would just say the big takeaway I hope everyone gets is that there are a ton of ways to get involved. If there's a way you're interested, we probably are, are already doing it. So just please reach out. We need your support. We need your help. The students most importantly need your support and help. So please don't be afraid to connect with us and give back of your time and talent and energy. Totally. And that's both of the organization, like if you're thinking of, you know, representing your organization or just as an individual, you want to um, come back and engage, there's opportunities for both, both routes. I wanna close out with two thank yous. One, thank you to the alumni who help support students' career aspirations, whether that's through recruiting and hiring, mentorship, volunteering, formal and informal. Um, we are a gopher family and do a lot to support one another. So thank you to those alumni. And then a huge thank you to our panel, Ife, Kathleen, Emily, and Inam. It was really great talking with you all today. And I hope you all have a great day. Signing off. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>